An experimental pop music station has caused something of a stir in Melbourne's radio industry. The most exciting thing uh, coming back to this country was uh, tuning into a radio station run by young people. It's called Hits FM. Youth Radio Hits FM took its fight for survival to Canberra today. With little or no experience, the kids behind Hits FM managed to embarrass the pros and capture an influential slice of the music market. To get an idea of how popular Hits FM has become and how quickly it's all happened, consider this. The team of brash baby broadcasters is grabbing more of the music airwaves from commercial FM stations. This station has quite obviously captured the imagination and support of Victorian youth. It was during the now infamous third broadcast in a Moorabbin office space that Melbourne Radio witnessed an unprecedented shift in the listening habits of its youth as they voted with their ears and tuned in to 89.9. Not having had anything like this ever before in Melbourne or Australia for that matter, we got something like 1,200 phone calls over those nine days. I think they were in the days when we didn't know what the reaction might be. So we, yeah, uh, yeah, one phone line, no, do two phone lines, that'll, that'll look after us. You go to pick it up to make an important call and there was someone going, oh, can I hear Michael Jordan? It was just like, get off our line. It was crazy. The four or five phones were just ringing constantly, one after the other, and as soon as you put them down, they'd be ringing again. So the system just wasn't prepared to cope with something like that. And um, the hits actually blew up the Moorabbin Exchange. I was very excited. I thought, gee, this is great. The impact is beyond what I thought when I heard that. I was very happy. At the same time, a bit sad for the, for the phone guys on the other end there at Telstra. Yes, it certainly was exciting times back then for anybody associated with Hits FM, volunteers and listeners alike. There were some, however, who would have been happy to see Hitch take a very long walk off a very short view. The plug is about to be pulled on Melbourne's giant killing youth radio, Hits FM. Some of the powers to be are trying to take this radio station off the air, uh, but uh, I think the youth of Melbourne certainly will uh, react to that. The commercial stations through their, their peak body, FARB, the Federation of Australian Radio Broadcasters, I think they tried to kill off Hits. The government was changing policies all the time purely because uh, Hits FM had been extremely successful in, in chasing the audience and ratings and uh, the commercial stations were putting a lot of pressure on the government to change the policies. Once Hits hit the scene, particularly after that big third broadcast, uh, I think they knew they were in for a bit, of a bit of a time because Hits was pulling the ratings in at that time. The ABA, they shouldn't have allowed it to drift along to the situation we have now where the licence was originally said it would be awarded in 95 and now it's 2000 and there's still no licence. Oh, they are just the most bureaucratic department I've ever heard of. Um, if there's one thing I, that really frustrates me, it's paper shuffling. I think, you know, when I look back at my life, that would have to be the most frustrating thing I've ever dealt with. Pretty disappointed with the delays, but it's really no one's fault because in 1993, the ABA put together a document called Planning Priorities. I mean, we're ter in this terrible position where we don't really want to be saying our real feelings about the ABA because they're pretty damn harsh because we know that they're the ones who's, uh, who are listening uh, and are going to be giving us uh, that, that little piece of paper down the line. Here we were working our asses off and obviously proving that there was a need and support for a radio station. And uh, they just weren't interested in the Melbourne market at the time. From my point of view, it was just hearing, well, they, you know, we can only do this much time and that is it. Because they're planning all this other part of Australia and they're going to do one part of Australia at a time. It wasn't all getting done at the same time. It felt like, well, is that the normal way they do it or is it just an excuse? But, the, you know, the reality is uh, if you ask people who are, say, no longer associated with hits what they think of the ABA, you know, they don't have to be minding their, their manners. And they, uh, they, you know, a lot of people just really wouldn't be very complimentary. And when other stations followed, Kits and Kiss and the other string of aspirants that have followed, I think that has shown that this community radio movement now is so strong that little obstacles that are thrown in our way by the commercial radio stations aren't going to stop the aspirants from broadcasting.